This presentation is about building an eye tracking system that can tell you where a user is looking at a really fast rate like 10,000 Hertz using a special sensor called an event-based camera, which I'll explain more about in a second. My collaborators on this project are Julian, Amit, Jurg, and Gordon. We did this work at Stanford, and I was really lucky to work with all of them. Eye tracking turns out to be a really important enabling technology in a lot of fields. For example, virtual reality and augmented reality, where it can be used for things like foveated rendering or predictive rendering, or in surgery, where you might be doing something like LASIK and you don't want to burn the user's eye, so you turn the, lasers, the, the laser off when the eye moves. Current eye tracking solutions usually fall into one of two camps. They're either near eye systems that run at around 120 to 200 hertz and have a middling accuracy of half a degree to one degree. These are the things normally on ARBR headsets. And then there's also the gold standard desktop mounted systems that usually are very expensive custom systems like the iLink 1000 that run at around 1000 hertz, maybe 2000 hertz, and they have a high accuracy down to the physiological limit of about half a degree of visual angle. And the question is, can we build something that bridges the two? Something that's miniaturizable, unlike the iLink, but also fast and accurate. It turns out that this fast and accurate uh, eye tracking is really necessary for the eye because the eye is the fastest moving organ in the body. It moves at speeds up to 200 degrees per second during saccadic motions. And these saccadic or micro saccadic motions or tremors, these fine movements of the eye, of the eye are really important objects of study um, for people like us. But the problem is if you were to try to build a system that samples fast enough to basically capture those movements at Nyquist, so if you built like a 10,000 frames per second system where each frame were 300 by 300 pixels and each pixel were 8 bits, well then, if you just multiply those numbers out, that gives you a data rate of 7.2 gigabytes per second, which is more data than USB 3.0 can even carry. Okay, so the data rate is crazy here, which means that we need a sensor that doesn't capture as much data if we want to make this work with, you know, reasonable hardware. But eye tracking lends itself well to this because eye tracking is in some sense a sparse problem. You only care about a few pixels that are moving. So most of the pixels on the eye are staying static, right? So if you look at the difference images, the difference video really on the right, you can see that only um, the pixels corresponding to the edge of the pupil are the ones that really matter. Event-based sensors are basically tailor-made for applications like these. Because in event-based cameras, the sampling is tied to the dynamics of the scene itself. Okay, So basically, each pixel in an event-based camera triggers when the local contrast at that pixel changes. Okay, So what I've plotted here is red events are places where the local contrast has decreased, and blue events are places where the local contrast has increased. Okay, So those are like minus 1 and plus 1. And you can see that in the direction the eye is moving, there's a lot of minus 1s because the, eye, the pupil is dark. And in the direction that the pupil came from, the white of the eye is entering. OK, so you're getting a positive contrast change. And indeed, you can see just from this little video that we are sampling exactly and only the information that we needed um, because it's, again, coupled to the underlying movement of the eye. So it turns out that the frame-based methods are pretty robust. So we can put on the same optical path a sensor that takes frames and also a sensor that takes events at the same time. Um, and we do this in order to get the robustness of frame-based methods, but also you can see here the advantage of frames is that they might catch, for example, a saccade that starts between two frames in time. And if you wanted to do that just with frames, you'd need to sample really fast, but we don't need to because the sensor is deciding when to sample for you based on when the eye moves. So now the natural question is, you have these two data streams, frames, and events. How do you combine them? And it turns out that you can combine them using morphological operations and a special variant of online least squares that we developed for this application in order to fit a parametric eye model, where, for example, you parameterize the pupil as an ellipse. So it's a circle under a projection, which is an, basically an ellipse. And then you can take that eye model and then use data to regress that to a gaze point. And we have data because we showed you a bunch of users a stimulus point on the screen, and we're able to then get that mapping. What I'm showing here is a video of an intermediary step in our pipeline, OK? So these yellow ellipses are different individual fits of the pupil estimate. OK, so for each pupil, I plot like a one pixel thick ellipse in time and space. Um, and the fact that you're seeing a continuous yellow tube here just means that we're getting a lot of estimates. And so we're really 
um, finely characterizing the motion of the pupil. Here's an example of the system working in practice. So Amit is here, and I've just moved around my, my mouse pointer on the screen there, which you can see. And I've plotted every so often, you know, every, let's say, 500 event fits. I've plotted a little red dot. So I've downsampled that because otherwise it'd be intractable to plot. And you can see that he's following it, and it's capturing his eye motion in real time. And here's another view of the same thing. So we're publicly releasing a data set along with our paper. Uh, and the data set includes three types of eye motions that we sampled in basically the same setting um it was, except we showed them a known stimulus. Okay, And the three types of data that we collect are smooth pursuit, saccadic motions, and fixations. And what I'm showing here is basically the location of the pupil that comes out of our algorithm is on the left. And there's four subjects being plotted in different colors. And then the regressed gaze point that comes out of our algorithm is on the right-hand side. The data set is on GitHub, and I'll post the link uh, in the description of this video. We also characterize the accuracy and precision of the system, and it's competitive essentially with the best eye trackers out there, down to half a degree of visual angle in the same um, field of view that those devices operate. Finally, we built, we built a miniature prototype of this system. So we 3D printed a harness and put in a, uh, that, that's shown on the right-hand side of this plot. And then we put an event-based camera in it, and you can see Julian's there in, in panel A, and we're imaging his eye, and you can see it moving on the, on the left-hand side. So we're hoping that this technology can be useful uh, in order to enable things like predictive rendering at really fast rates in virtual and augmented reality, and I'd love your thoughts on the topic. Thanks for listening to the presentation, and feel free to reach out, even if you're watching virtually.